There are five things I want to talk to you about tonight. Sit down. I will read this scripture so you write them down. I want it to become your guide. Tonight, I just don't want to preach extemporaneously. I want you to write it. Practice it. Because the power and the excellency is in the practice. The first thing I want to talk to you about tonight is the significance of faith. So that you know why this thing is so important. Why the Bible will say the just shall live. It didn't say wisdom. Wisdom is important. Wisdom is the principal thing. Get it. In all thy getting, get understanding. It didn't say power. Not many days from now you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power. But when it has to do with living, power is important. Wisdom is important. He said, but if you will walk by one, walk by faith. Why is this thing so important? I advance a few reasons. Number one, only by faith can you obtain a good report. So anything not done by faith will be failed by heaven. He said in Hebrews 11 verse 2, he said, by it, the elders obtained a good report. That is why in verse 6 he said, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For whoever cometh to him must believe that he is and is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So prayer without faith is useless. Fasting without faith is useless. Success without faith is useless. Because the only way you can please God is by faith. This is why faith is too important. Without faith, it's impossible. It didn't say you might not be able to. It's impossible. So anything you do, there must be a faith undertone to it. Otherwise, you will not have a good report. I don't want to succeed in anything that I don't have faith for. If I don't have faith in any area, may I fail until I discover faith. So that I don't labor without approval of heaven. Because faith is the seal of approval from heaven. Number two. Faith is all important because it is the creator of all possibilities. Anywhere there is no faith, forget about possibilities. Hebrews 11 from verse 1. It said, now faith is the substance the substance. If there's anything animated, the substance of that thing is faith. And he said, the evidence of things not seen. In verse 2, he said, by it, the elders obtain a good report. Verse 3, see what the Bible said. Through faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made from things which do appear. When you see anybody commanding any dimension of possibility, there is faith as an undertone. And if there is any area of your life where you can't create possibilities, it's because faith does not have dominion in that area. This is why it's important for us to live by faith. Listen, you need many possibilities. You need possibilities in the area of your relationship with God. You need possibility in the area of your finances. You need possibilities in the area of your health. You need possibilities in the area of your relationship. You need possibilities in the area of your career and business. The key to it is faith. People don't prosper by luck. There's no such thing as luck. Everything you see happening is orchestrated. And even if there was luck, there are 8 billion people on earth. When will your turn come? So some of us refuse to function by luck. We take it by force. And the way we take it is by faith. I am not here because people wished me well. In fact, when I started, many wished me dead. But faith negated it. You don't rise by the goodwill of people. If you have it, enjoy it. But whether they like it or not, you march forward. Because there is something that you have that makes you unstoppable. The name of that thing is called faith. It produces impossibility. We didn't imagine these things. As mundane as this is, by the way. When we started, I told myself, get two full long-range speakers. Let's pray in tongues for one year with a few people. But the more I prayed, the more I saw. The more I prayed, the more I saw. We started the inaugural service as if we have been there for 10 years. Because if faith comes alive, it will go even beyond your expectation. And possibilities 
upon possibilities. Keep being created because that's the work of faith. This is why it's all important. Number three, faith is all important because it is the only way to obtain the promises of God. Hebrews 11 verse 11. By faith, Sarah herself received strength that she may bring forth. Even when she was past the age, because she judged faithful him that has promised. By faith, Sarah received strength. So there is a strength for receiving that faith produces. You will see the promises of God littered from Genesis to Revelation. If your faith does not come alive, you will not experience it. And the point will come, you start wondering, is this thing not for everybody? Is it not true? It is true, but it takes faith to deliver it to you. By faith, Sarah received strength to bring forth. This is why it's all important. In Hebrews 6, 12, it says, Be a followers of them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. So if there is no faith, there is no result in view. Jesus himself speaking in Matthew 9, 29. He said, be it done to you. Not according to the power of God. This is where many people miss it. Say, God can do it. God can do it. Nobody's arguing it. Even the devil knows. The devil knows God can do it. He said, thou believest that there's only one God. Thou doest well. The devil also believes and trembles. The devil knows God can do it. The only difference is that the devil does not depend on what God can do. So you, by faith, will take delivery of what God has promised you because you depend on it and you take actions based on what God said. If you know what God has promised us, you will know that even the best of us has not attained 30% of it. Because when God showed us a standard, it was himself. Jesus is the revelation of God's standard. So anybody who attains God's standard will become exactly like Jesus. How many of us has, have attained 30% of Jesus? So you know that what God promised, we are still many mileages away from it. And the reason is because we are not developing faith. See, practice the way of faith. Grow in faith and make sure you live by faith. A lot depends on it. By faith, you obtain the promise. Number four, why is faith important? It is your victory. You don't just win by faith. Faith itself is your victory. First John chapter 5 verse 4 he said, Whoever is born of God overcometh the world. And he said, This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Even our faith. Many people are asking God, Why am I here? God is telling you, What are you doing with your faith? Your victory does not depend on God. Your victory depends on your exercise of faith. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. In Ephesians 6, 16, it said, Therefore, taking up the shield of faith, wherewith you are able to quench the fiery darts of the devil. See, God is not moved by the things attacking you. He is moved when you are not exercising faith. Because you are in danger if your faith is not alive. If your faith does not come alive, you are already in danger. This is why you need to learn the way of faith and deploy yourself to seeing that your faith is at work. Every time the devil destroys your faith, you are finished. Jesus was with Peter and the devil succeeded in attacking his faith. Instantly, Jesus began to pray for him. Luke twenty-two thirty-one. 31, Simon, Simon, he says, Satan desires to have you, to sift you like wheat. I say wheat? You know how light wheat is? That means without faith, we are light before the devil. He can blow us off and we vanish. The reason you stand like Mount Zion that cannot be moved is because your faith is your weight. Jesus says, Simon, set and desire. That means without faith, you are like chaff. If he blows, you vanish. Have you not seen people who are blown out of existence as if they are flies? Because there was no faith at the foundation. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. He said, when thou art recovered, strengthen thy brethren. God forbid that I'm like chaff before the devil. When he comes, he will meet weight. Because I would have doctored my faith to stand like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. This is why faith is important. It's your victory. It's your victory. So don't let anything rob you of your faith and don't let anything stop you 
from growing your faith. Number five, why is faith so important? It's the key to relevance, not just with God, but eternally. Hebrews 11, 32, he said, time will fail me to speak of Gideon and of Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions. Verse 34, he said, quench the violence of fire escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness were made strong and worked valiant in fight and turned to flight the armies of the alien so even when time fails men of faith must be mentioned because you can't deny their impact time will fail me but you must call their names so a man is relevant to the degree of the manifestation of his faith have you not seen many who have gone to be with the Lord every day we are calling their name Today, in fact, if ministers want to feel relevant, they tell you they met Vesey the host. Any minister who is above 40, 45, he will tell you when Vesey the host was alive. Some never saw him. But they know the man's relevance out, has outlived him. So they draw relevance from, from him. I was with Vesey the host. He told me, you will shake the world. Or go and shake the world. Leave stories behind. If your faith does not come alive, you will not amount to anything. Do you know how many preachers were in his generation? Where are they? So number means nothing. It's faith that makes the difference. Number means nothing. There were many bishops. There were many apostles. And I don't want to, I'm not saying this to spite them. I'm saying this to inspire you. That you will not be lost in the number. Make sure your own faith produces the result. Because you will not be remembered because you came. You will be remembered because you made a difference. And the power to make the difference is the extent to which you manifest faith. Faith is too important. It is what makes you eternally relevant. And finally, I reiterate again, without faith it is impossible to please God. And there is nobody here who does not want to please God. In fact, one of the reasons for creation is to please God. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11, he said, all things were created for thy pleasure. So if you are not pleasing God, your creation and your existence is useless. Your existence counts for nothing. And the Bible tells us clearly that the only way to please God is by faith. It therefore means only faith can give relevance to your existence as far as God is concerned. This is why you cannot allow your faith to be destroyed. Too many persons have allowed their faith to either be destroyed or to be made inactive and they relax because they don't know the importance of faith. Faith is not just about commanding results. Results are one of them or is one of the many things faith does. However, faith is much more important than commanding results. These are few significances of faith. Now, having touched this, let me show you some ingredients that every genuine faith must have before I go into the subject of building faith itself. Mm. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. And forever you are God. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. You are holy. Forever you are God. You are holy. teaching here is the byproduct of the service. The real service didn't happen here. The real service happened when the Holy Ghost was talking to me. Ah! My heart will be burning. My heart. You know when 
when the Holy Ghost showed me the scripture that the things that were made were not made from the things we do appear. Two things were shot into my heart. That was when I heard that faith does not need raw material. The moment that it entered my heart, the next thing that popped up was I will never believe God for small things. If it doesn't need raw material, then why ask for small things? I will ask for the biggest thing always, any day, any time. Because the reason things get exhausted is because maybe the raw material finished. If it doesn't have raw material, that means anything you call can appear. So you may be a healing evangelist. Trust God for pain. I trust God for cancer. I trust God for the dead coming back to life. You may be a businessman. You may be trusting God for a building in Wuse 2. Ha. I'm trusting God to take over Dubai, to take over America, to take over London. The thing does not have raw material. My job is to believe. I began to tell myself, I said before this year is over, we must register our presence in at least 10 nations. I was thinking we will do four. But if the thing has no raw material, the power will appear. The resources will appear. The men will appear. I don't know where you are, but I decree and declare over you. From tonight, your life shifts to a next level. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. You are holy. faith. I will go anywhere I want to go to. The doors are open. The opportunities are granted. It is not by connection, it's by faith. Even where you need connection, it's faith that will bring it. Yes, sir. And forever you, are gone. you know what the Bible said about Joseph? When he was sent to look for his brothers, he was lost. He was stranded. And suddenly the Bible said, a certain man told him, you will see that word, I think, three or four times in the Bible. When the Bible says a certain man, they are not men. They are angels. So even when there, there is no man, men can appear. That's why Hebrews 13 verse 2 said, Be careful to entertain strangers, because some have received angels unaware. See, if you don't have a man, God will appear there. I read the story of Maurice Cerullo. The first time he took the gospel to Russia, more than 50 years ago, a bishop invited him but after he was supposed to they had printed flyer he had shut down his schedule to make the journey so then the bishop calls that they don't have money for train or for ship and Maurice Rulo say ah I've already announced this thing I'm going everybody's aware I've shut down my schedule what do I do he went for service that evening and the woman came with hunchback and while he was preaching the hunchback disappeared and the woman came out and said, this is the money I just gathered yesterday for the operation for this hunchback. If the hunchback has gone, I don't need the money. Take it. The money was the exact money he needed for transport. He now entered Russia. When he got to Russia, Bishop was nowhere to be found. You know why? The Russian government had passed a law that there will be no open religious meeting. And Bishop saw that this young boy have traveled all the way from America. What do I tell him? Bishop went into hiding. Moruserulo didn't even have transport fare to come back. All he needed to do, the little extra change he had, he booked for a hotel and he was there and was praying. On the eighth day, a man came up and knocked on the door. Nobody knew he was there. And the man said, the person on white standing on the road said, I shall come and help you. He said, who is the person on white? I don't know anybody in Russia. They went out. There was nobody there. An angel had come and mobilized somebody on their hand. Now, guess what? Guess who the angel sent? The, the person that was sent works with the president. And the man said, okay, let's not worry. I'm here to help you. What do you want? He said, I came for an open air crusade, but I can't find my host. Imagine you, a young boy, went to a nation you have never been to and your host vanishes. I can't find my host. And the, the man told him, you wanted to do a crusade? Are you a preacher? He said, yes. What do you preach? He preached to the man and converted him first. The man told the president and they declared a national crusade. And 
declared the crusade was held in the city center. It was on the crusade day that Bishop showed up and said, I am Bishop. But that time, faith had already produced results. Faith. Faith. See, the Bible said, by it, the elders obtained a good report. Our generation is using psychology. That's why we cannot go far. See, there is something that cannot lie. Heaven and earth were made by the raw material called faith. When I learned this, I told myself, in this life, nothing can stop me. Nothing. That thing has not been created. Whether devil or man, there is nothing that can stop me in this life. See, if you hate me, you are enjoying yourself. I am unstoppable. We are like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. This is not pride. This is the assurance of faith. And forever you are God. And forever you are God. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. You are holy. it will be folded up. Hear the word of the Lord. The life of God comes upon it now. That business will not only succeed, it will become one of the leading businesses in this generation. Although the earth was void, darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said, let there be light. I decree and declare, let light come upon that business. Let life come upon that business and let that business begin to multiply in the name of Jesus. Sit down for a moment. See, stop looking at yourself and sizing yourself. Nobody need your size. Your size does not matter. It's your faith that matters. It's your impact that matters. In fact, it's even more glorious when you don't look like it. That's why the Bible says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, it said, thou hast ordained strength. Stop looking at your size. You are looking at the wrong thing. Focus on your faith and develop it. And see the giant your faith will make out of you. Who told you you are defeated? Forget about men. Anyone that should connect to you, God will make the way. Don't pursue men. Somebody testified the other day. He came here. I prayed for him. He was not healed. He went back and was listening to my message and faith came alive in him. The affliction vanished. Men are a gift. But men don't replace Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Build your faith. What are the ingredients of faith? Genuine, authentic and impactful faith. Number one is understanding. See, our problem is not fatal. Hear me, everybody listening to me now, you have enough faith to raise the dead. You have enough faith to do anything that your destiny requires. And I'm not the one saying it. That's what the Bible said. Romans 12 verse 3, it said to every one of us, he dealt the measure of faith. The measure. That means the amount of faith you require for a glorious destiny has already been dealt to you. And Jesus speaking, he said, if your faith is as small as a mustard seed, he said, you can tell this mountain, be thou removed. You know what Jesus was trying to say? Comparing your crisis with the amount of faith needed is incomparable. If your faith is as small as a mustard seed, he said, you will say to this mountain, be thou removed. He said, if you do not doubt in your heart, you will have whatsoever you say. Your problem is lack of understanding. You don't know you already have enough faith and you don't know what to do with your faith. And the faith we have is not even our own. It's the faith of the Son of God. Galatians 2 verse 20. Hear what Paul said. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. The faith that works in us is not our faith. It's the faith of the Son of God. And this is the same faith the apostles had. Because Paul was speaking in 2 Corinthians 4.13. He said, according as it is written, they believe and have spoken. We have been the same spirit of faith. So this faith of the Son of God that Paul has, Paul said is the same faith that the apostles had. And the apostles said, we have like precious faith. 
2 Peter 1 verse 1. This same apostolic faith that Paul said he possesses, that is the faith of the Son of God. Peter was speaking about that faith. And he says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith. So the faith you have is the faith Peter has. The faith Peter has is the faith Paul has. And the faith Paul has had is the faith that Jesus had. So you have the faith of the Son of God. Your problem is not a faith problem. Your problem is an understanding problem. So the first ingredient that your faith requires is understanding. The moment light comes, faith is activated. Genesis chapter 15 from verse 5 to 6. God was laboring with Abraham to believe. He couldn't. This is God talking to a man directly. Abraham could not believe. And the Bible said, And God brought him forth abroad and said, Look towards heaven and tell the stars if you are able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. He was trying to open his understanding. And in verse 6, the Bible said, And Abraham believed God. The moment understanding comes, faith comes alive. And Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Every time God wants our faith to come alive, he shows us things. In Genesis 13, 14, take up thy head and look. Whatever you see, you will possess. That was how Abraham possessed the head, by looking. See, don't joke with your understanding. This is why the devil is running about twatting people's understanding. You know what the Bible said? In 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3 and 4, it says, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, whom the God of this world, the God of this world, have blinded their minds. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, the God of this world have blinded their minds from seeing the glorious image of the invincible God. They can't see it, so they can't believe it. If your eyes are blinded, your faith is dead. Why do you think the people of the world can't receive the heritage of the saints? The Bible said their understanding is darkened. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16, 17, and 18. Their understanding is darkened. So they can't receive the wealth that we are possessed of. But for us who, has, who have understanding, the Bible said, For this cause I pray that the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Ephesians 1, verse 17 and 18, may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know. The moment you know, number one, he said the hope of your calling is activated. Number two, he said the exceeding riches of the glory that is available to the saint is possessed of you. And number three, he said you enter the power that God wrought when he raised Jesus from the dead. So the key to activating your faith is understanding. Any area you are ignorant, you can never exercise faith. You can raise the dead. The reason you are not is because you are ignorant. You can prosper in your business. The reason you are not is because you are ignorant. You can live a healthy life. The reason you are not is because you are ignorant. That's why I say buy the truth, sell it not. Pursue it, pursue it. Pursue it. He said, through knowledge shall they just be delivered. He said, my people perish. Not because there's no power to save them. He said, it's for the lack of knowledge. Everywhere there's ignorance, faith is dead. I read books. I listen to sermons. I don't have time to waste. When I see somebody commanding results, I find out what does he know. That's what motivates me listening to people. Why are you on fire? What do you know? Why are you working so much miracles? What do you know? Why do you have so much influence? What do you know? Why are you commanding so much wealth? What do you know? If you know what they know, you enter what they entered. He sent his word to Jacob, a lightened upon Israel. Anyone that knows, we enter. The door is open to those who have understanding. Number two ingredient of faith is love. Anywhere there's no love, faith will be numb. Nothing immobilizes faith like love, like lack of love. And nothing awakens faith like love. The Bible says Jesus saw them and he was moved with compassion for them and he healed them all. The moment love awoke, awakens, faith is activated. Anywhere love dies, faith becomes mortified. 
Galatians chapter 5 verse 6, the Bible says, faith walketh by love. So anywhere there's no faith, no love, faith will not walk. This is why the devil is trying to cause problems between you and everybody. It's not about the people, it's about your faith. He knows that when you carry up the shield of faith, you will destroy his attack. So before he attacks you, he makes sure your love quotient is damaged. And when your love quotient is destroyed, your faith cannot produce results. Paul was speaking in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 3. He said, if I give all my goods to the poor, if I give my body to be born and I have no love, he said, what does it profit me? The reason people's faith is not profiting them is because they are not walking in love. You know what the Bible said? In 1 John chapter 3 verse 14, it said, where there's no love, the people dwell in death. You want your faith to walk? Not show your love. And can I tell you one thing that will make you love anybody? Because you are unlovable. God chose to love you, not because you want it. Why do you forgive everybody? Not because they are reasonable. You also were guilty of death. You couldn't help yourself. God forgave you. So if God forgave you unconditionally, he is teaching you that you too must forgive others unconditionally. This is why Paul was speaking in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 13 and 14. He said, for the love of Christ constraineth us. He said, for we don't judge that if one died for all, they which live should not live for themselves, but for him that died for them. See, if you don't understand the foundation and the root of the love that you enjoy from God, you will not know how to extend it to others. You were not worthy of love. You were not worthy of forgiveness. God forgave you notwithstanding. To give you a pattern and an example. That's why it says to forgive others as you were forgiven. And there is a blessing attached to it. Every time you walk in love, your faith comes alive. I'm telling you why most of us are not walking in faith. The faith subject is not too hard. But it has requirements and ingredients. Have understanding. Have love. Let's see if you will not manifest faith. Number three. Ingredient of faith. Patience. Or endurance. Hebrews 6. 21. Hebrews 6. 12. I beg your pardon. It said not being slothful in business. But followers of them who through faith and what? Patience. Who through faith and patience obtains the promise. The reason many cannot walk into the reality of their faith is because they lack patience. He had headache. He prayed for one hour. The headache didn't go. And the next thing he said, Lord, I don't think you are real. If you are real, why has he not gone? And so the answer was on the way. Did you read Daniel's, Daniel's experience? Daniel knelt down praying for 21 days. Answer had not come. He didn't change his mind. When the angel showed up, the angel said something surprising. He said, from the first day you knelt down, the answer was released. He said, but I was withstood by the prince of Persia. What if Daniel stood up on the 20th day and said, this thing not the work? You know what would have happened? He would have been convinced that this thing not the work. But the question is, to whom's detriment? Him. It doesn't affect God. So it was not just faith that gave Daniel the answer. It was patience. Most of us can't wait. That's why we can't see the wonders of God. In Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1, he said, I will stand upon my watch to see what he will say to me. And he said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables, that he might run that readed it. And he went further to say something surprising. He said, though the vision tarries, he said, wait for it, it shall not tarry. Are you not contradicting yourself? What is he saying? Yes, according to human time, it might delay. But according to God's time, there's no delay. Anytime God shows up, that's the right time. Lazarus was sick. Jesus didn't come. Four days later, when he was dead, Jesus showed up. And Martha said, if you were here, our brother would not have died. That is the conclusion many have. 
and they never get their answer. It's not about if you were here. Who am I? You don't judge reality by time. You judge reality by their eternal values. As if that was not enough. Mary showed up. The same thing. To show you human, human psychology is consistent. If you were here, our brother would not have died. When Jesus saw that these people cannot be convinced, he wept. He wasn't weeping because Lazarus won't come back to life. He was weeping for the magnitude of their unbelief. And the next thing he cried, thank you father because you always hear me, roll away the stone. Lazarus, come forth. Everybody started jubilating. This is our problem. We are too moved by time. We are not moved by the veracity of the word of God. See, if God says it is where, it is where. It doesn't matter when it happens. The assurance is that when he said it, it is done. Jesus prayed for a man. He came to Jesus and wanted Jesus to come and pray for his son. And Jesus looked at him and said, you these people, if you don't see a sign, you will not believe. And the man said, master, help me. And Jesus told him, go, your son is well. There was no symptom. The man started going. And the next day, he met his servant coming to him. See him, he human beings. And they asked him, they say, your son is where? Really? Oh, great. At what time did he begin to amend? He wanted to know whether it was the declaration Jesus made or coincidence. And they told him at about this time yesterday. And the Bible said the man knew that was the time Jesus spoke. Human psychology. We lack patience. That's why we don't see supernatural results. In Acts, Mark chapter 11. From verse 11 to verse 13. The Bible says Jesus went out of the city and he was heading towards Jerusalem and he saw a fig blossoming and he went to court and they discovered there was no fruit there and Jesus and the Bible says and Jesus answered I don't have time to tell you why he said and Jesus answered listen circumstances talk to you you are the one who thinks only things that make verbal communication talk that money that is not in your bank is talking to you you don't know how faith works. That's why you are lying and talking to you. You are not responding. That thing the devil is doing around you is talking to you. Your heart is reading it. After a while, you will conclude that I won't succeed. But that is not Jesus. When there's no money in your account and your account begins to talk to you, that is this how you will end. Don't keep quiet. I will not end like this. My wealth is not contained by a bank. My wealth comes from heaven. My God supplies all my needs. That's how you talk. Answer your empty account. Answer the pain in your body. Answer the circumstances. If you don't answer, you won't have result. The Bible said, And Jesus answered and said, No man shall eat of you henceforth. And the disciples were looking. They thought the tree would dry. Nothing happened. Their heart was broken. They said, Kai, for the first time he has spoken and nothing happened. Well, at least he has 99.99%. Let's just manage that. And they went to the city. And Jesus was not perturbed. The next day when they were coming back. Look at your brothers. They were watching the fig tree. And Peter shouted. Master. The fig tree that you cursed. Has withered up. He didn't move Jesus. Jesus knew them. And Jesus answered. Mark 11, 22. Have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. Don't be moved by time. Don't be moved by manifestation. It may not happen now. It must happen. He said, when you see a mountain, say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast away. If you do not doubt in your heart, you will surely have what you say. You may not have it now. It doesn't mean you will not have it. This is why the gap between your manifestation and your declaration is patience. Stay there. Don't change your confession. Stay there. Don't change your mind. Stay there. Don't be perturbed. It is a necessary ingredient of faith. You are in a service like this. God tells you poverty is over. And you declared it. After two months, nothing happened. And you came. Did this, what he said, is it true at all? Ha, I don't know. Ha, relax. Do you know who is talking? Who are you? He has talked to men for many generations. No one failed. He talks to nature. He told bread multiply. Bread had intelligence to multiply. He told water carry me. Water had intelligence to carry him. He see your small circumstance that will not obey. My brother, calm down. Faith walketh by patience.
patience. Necessary ingredient of faith. Number four, good conscience. Don't do something to spite somebody else. Yeah. By the time this blind eye open, all these people will know that I'm not their mate. You are about to die. By the time I make that 10 million, that's when I will tell them who I am. You are about to die. It's a holding faith and a good conscience which some having put away concerning faith have shipwrecked their faith. Holding faith and a good conscience which some having put away concerning faith have shipwrecked their faith. You want your faith to work? You must sustain a good conscience. If you allow your conscience to be affected, you will not walk in faith. In 1 Timothy 3.9, he said, holding the mystery of faith in a pure conscience. Do you know why Hannah couldn't have a child? It's not because God was powerless. She wanted to have a child in order to respond to her, the, 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 the second wife, and prove to her that she too could have a child. And she wept for years. Nothing happened. The time your conscience is straightened, faith goes to work. When Eli looked at her and said, son of Belia, for how long will you continue this drunkenness? She said, I'm not drunk. It's out of the magnitude of my sorrow that I'm weeping to the Lord. And El El Eli told her, go, the Lord will answer you. What happened? Hannah said something. If he gives me this child, I will give him back to God. I'm no longer looking for a child to prove a point to the other woman. Give me this child for a pure reason. In the next year, she came back with her son. Listen, your destiny is too big to prove a point to people. Don't leave a reaction. Take action. You'll start a ministry to prove a point to somebody. Who is that person? You see, does he have that level of value and relevance? You are doing a business to prove a point to somebody. You are already a slave of that person. Sir, enjoy your life. Enjoy the faithfulness of God. Make progress. Forget about people. They don't matter. The ones who matter will work with you. The ones who don't matter to your destiny. They may be relevant with God. They will be fulfilling their own destiny. Leave them. Don't shipwreck your faith. They say holding faith and a good conscience. There is so much God wants to do that we are limiting him from doing because of our mindset. By the time you succeed, your impact will tell a story. If he impacts that person, that's his business. But you focus and live your life for God. That's what makes your faith work. Good conscience. Fifth ingredient of faith is persuasion. Conviction that is beyond doubt. If you are not persuaded, you will not see the power of faith. The Bible speaking concerning Abraham. Romans 4 verse 18 to verse 21. See the way he puts it. The Lord put, He said, Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations? According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Verse 19. He said, And be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20. He said, He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21. And being fully persuaded that what he has promised he will be able to do. See, some of us are not persuaded. You know why we are not persuaded? We are listening to God and listening to the word. So, many times when we want to exercise faith, we are caught in between two opinions. And then sometimes, the opinion of the word becomes louder than the opinion of God. If you want to be fully convinced, shut your ears to every other thing. Shut your attention only on God. And you will see that you will become convinced. You believe the word of God though. The problem is that you are not persuaded. There are other things that compete with the word of God. And that's because you open yourself to those things. This is why Ephesians 4.27. Paul said, give him no place to the devil. If you give him a chance, he will persuade you. And he will persuade you against God. There were many people who were working miracles before. They prayed for one person. The person was not healed. And in their grief, the devil showed up and said, come on now. Do you think this thing was real in the first place? And they gave thought to it. 
they prayed for another person, the person was not healed. Could this be true? And before they know what is happening, they drift from faith to unbelief. There are many persons who were walking doggedly in the house of God until something happened to them. And based on administrative oversight, church didn't remember to visit them. And the devil came and said, uh -uh, look at you. You think they care about you before? You are just a, 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 a you are you are using you now. Are you not aware? And the person sat down and said, "But it's true. Even in my department, the HOD didn't call me. I'm not saying church shouldn't show love, but I'm saying if you left church because of somebody, you are not God's servant. Even the department didn't come. Pastor didn't call me. Meanwhile, I'm the one that sweep church." Let them come and see who we sweep church. Is it pastor you are sweeping for? And before you know what is happening, he stops coming to church. Two months later, he starts going to club. He starts drinking alcohol. Six months later, he starts humanizing. One year later, he has HIV. It's on the sick bed, he will now come back and say, Oh Lord, if I knew, if I knew. See, what you are doing for God is for your own good. Don't let anybody persuade you otherwise. And don't let the devil persuade you otherwise. Church is like a dry cleaning press. They are dirty clothes here yeah? and they are iron clothes. And sometimes even pastor can be dirty. We are all a work in progress. A pastor can show anger that he was not supposed to show. A pastor can show negligence that he was not supposed to show. He is not your Jesus. You must be persuaded about everything you are doing so that the devil doesn't persuade you otherwise. Abraham was persuaded. That was why when God told him to bring Isaac back. Hebrews 11, 19. He went without doubt. You know why? He said, him that gave Isaac can also raise him back from the dead in the figure. He was fully persuaded. If you want your faith to work, you must be persuaded. The people who walk mightily in faith were persuaded men. They didn't open their heart to anything and nothing convinced them otherwise. The sixth ingredient of faith is doggedness. If you are not aggressive, you will see a lot of things. Oh, I read the scripture that literally blew me off my seat. Matthew 15 is the story of the Canaanite woman from verse 21 to verse 28. Let's read this. I won't explain. Just hear this scripture and see what will happen to your spirit. Then Jesus went tense. And departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously, grievously vexed with the devil. Verse 23. But he answered her not a word. He was looking at Jesus koro koro like this. Help me. And Jesus refused to answer her. Until, see what happened. And his disciples came and besought him saying, Send her away for she cried after us. That means Jesus kept quiet until the thing drew attention. And the disciples said, People are looking at us as if we are callous people. If you don't want to help this man, tell her to go. Imagine, this is not a man. This is Jesus, the king of compassion. Kept quiet. And the woman wouldn't stop. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lordship of the house of Israel. You see the first answer Jesus gave? The resources I have is not for people like her. She said, Gentile, I came only for the Jews. If it was only this answer, it was enough to turn her away. But that was not all. Go to verse 25. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. And hear the one Jesus now said. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. I'm showing you what dog get faith is. That even when God says no, your faith can say yes. Because God can't deny faith. It's not meat to give the children's bread to dogs. You know why? If you are not in the covenant, you have not come into the honor of God. 
And a man in honor that knoweth not is like the beast of the field that perishes. So also is a man that is not in honor. So Jesus was not insulting her. From the realm of God, those who live without divine purpose, they are like animals. Hear the woman's reply. And she said, Truth, Lord, I don't argue with your word. And she still respected and honored him and called him Lord. I won't stop worshiping you because of what you have said. Yet, the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Jesus stood up. Who is this? Somebody said doggedness. See, you relax too quick. Oh Lord, heal me, heal me. You go and lie down. I don't know why God is not healing me. I must be healed. It is either yes or yes. And it must be yes. And it cannot but be yes. Jesus stood up. Hear Jesus' response and said unto her, Oh, that's exclamation. The man surprised the master. I thought you knew all things, sir. Yes, I do. But when I see some things that I know, even me, I wonder. Oh, woman, great is thy faith. Be it done unto thee as thou wilt. And the daughter was made whole. The woman was dogged. See, there's a generation that will not say no for and take no for an answer. I must marry, nothing will stop it. I must prosper, nothing will stop it. I must work miracles, nothing will stop it. See, I'm not part of those who are going to cry as if heaven and earth has passed away. I will beseech the master until it happens. Because I know the will of God. In Matthew 8 from verse 1 to 3, Jesus was coming down from a mountain. And a leprous man went to him and said, Master, if thou be willing, thou shalt make me whole. Jesus said, I'm willing. I know the will of God concerning my prosperity. I know the will of God concerning my health. I know the will of God concerning my life. So I will not take no for an answer. Most of us are not dogged. Time makes you change your mind. Men make you change your mind. I've quoted for you many times the story of Bartimaeus. He was shouting from when Jesus entered Jericho till Jesus went out. Jesus entered Jericho and ignored him. He didn't stop. Because if you read it from the different accounts, you will see that one account said he was shouting when Jesus was entering. Another account said he was shouting when Jesus was coming out. That means he was shouting from when Jesus came. He didn't care how many days he will spend. He kept shouting until Jesus was going out. And Jesus had no choice but to stop. Sir, what do you want? He said that I might see again. See, if you are not dogged, you won't have some things. Some things are reserved only for the dogged. That's why our life is not at the same scale. Some retired too early. Some gave up too early. Some quitted too early. But there are others that said, I would rather die in faith than to turn back. Did you not read about the heroes of faith? The Bible said they died in faith. The best way to die is to die in faith. I will not change my mind. He said we are not of them that drop back unto perdition. But continue to the saving of the soul. Your faith requires doggedness. When you become dogged, then you enter the last ingredients of faith which is rest. That's why I say labor to enter your rest. Labor. When you enter the rest of faith, anxiety dies, fear dies. If your faith is genuine faith, all of these indicators will show. But you see, this kind of faith is not stumbled upon, it's developed. Because what God gave us is the seed of faith. It's our duty to develop it. Now, very quickly as I round up, how do you now develop your faith in order to possess all of these ingredients? Number one, is by sitting on the word. Romans 10, 17. It's an authentic and genuine faith. Not psychological faith. Not manipulative faith. Not sense-based faith. He said, authentic and genuine faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you want your faith to grow, hear the word of God. That's one of the reasons you were given an ear. See, you may not feel it. Faith is not an emotional thing. He said we walk by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Not by sensory perception. You can be hearing the word of God and feeling nothing. Relax. Something is happening to your spirit. 
the moment the word enter, the word inseminates your spirit with faith. And that faith keeps growing. See, the reason most of us don't walk in faith is because there is scarcity of the word in our spirits. You heard what they, all the, testimony, the testimonies they gave. At the nick of time, when the devil thought he has gotten them, the word now comes out. So that word that you were hearing was incubating in your spirit. I saw a wonder when I was a little boy that I will never forget. Do you know all these men that takes off? One of them died. He was a conch snuff taker. When he died, do you know they kept, they laid him in state. And when we came to see, because those days in the neighborhood, if somebody dies, they say, if you see him, you will not be afraid. I don't even know where they got all these things from. And they will force all of us to come and see. And when we came to see, we saw that all the snuff the man was taking was coming out on his nose. They were keeping things on top of his nose and the thing was getting wet. I said, wait, all the snuff he was taking was stored. So it didn't go anywhere. Snuff was coming out and they kept, they buried him. The thing didn't fish. Till today, I don't know where the snuff was stored. Maybe doctor will help us. You know what? That's how faith works. When the word enters you, it didn't leave you, it's there. It's when something that word requires happens to you. That's where you will be shocked. It will jump out of you without you thinking. See, the word that produces result does not come from your reasoning. It comes from your spirit. That's why you store the word there. It doesn't matter. When you are in the middle of an accident, you will hear, I shall not die. You won't even know where it came from. When you are somewhere and somebody tell you, you will see, you will tell him, I can't see anything. I am the light of the world. I shine in darkness. You won't know where the word came from. It was stored. So Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone because it's the word that bears with. In Colossians 3 verse 16, he said, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Let it dwell. See, open yourself to the word. You know the formula Paul gave us? 1 Timothy 4 13, until I come, give attendance to reading to exhortation and to doctrine. He said, give thyself wholly to these things, verse 15, that your profit may be made manifest to all. Give yourself wholly. If you are not tired, read. If you are tired, listen to somebody else's talk. That's exhortation. Somebody else is talking into your spirit. I've even mastered it now. Sometimes I'm sleeping. A message is playing. Because the Bible says, why men slept? The devil sold. So if the devil can sow when men sleep, is it God who is the master sower that won't sow? Your spirit does not sleep. He that keepeth Israel, neither sleep nor slumber. God is a spirit. They that worship him, must worship him in spirit and truth. And the God of peace, sanctify thee holy. Spirit, soul and body. My body might sleep. My soul might sleep. My spirit is like God. is awake. And so is receiving. That's why some of you are listening to messages. When you sleep, the message turns to encounter. It's animated. Somebody was listening to my message. I was talking about the cherubims. And suddenly he entered the dream world and started seeing cherubims. The spirit entered to the reality of the world. Eat it. Jeremiah 15, 16, he said, I found thy world. I ate it. It became the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. See, don't allow... You can lack money, not word. Because money doesn't produce word, but word produces money. You may lack health, not word. Health does not produce word, but word produces health. By all means, choke yourself. See, let the word choke you. That's why it says you dwell in you richly. Think it, talk it, do it. Think it, talk it, do it. Those days, people will tell me, is it every topic you, you bring Bible? I'm not planning it. I don't know where it comes from. I'm too saturated. And I listen to men who are saturated with the word. Sometimes I sit down. Bishop Oedeko is shouting, is roaring. The introduction alone has 15 verses of scripture. And then sometimes you are lying down. He will quote some, you will jump up. Ash, where, where did this? Uh, the other time I was listening to me and he said, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Oh, as I heard it, wisdom and knowledge. 
shall be the stability. Something happened to me. I died. Makara katoa. Imole deo. Okuku. Imole deo. Okuku. doctors were saying all kinds of things and my heart was broken and I went to pray as I was praying I now heard and the years of thy life shall be 80 and if by reason of strength it shall be 90 I jumped up my prayer has finished the word has come see this is the word when it comes like that nothing can stop it they are the bullets of the spirit they are shot out of your spirit man when the Bible says you are God's battle axe, his weapon of war, when God wants to shoot, you are the one who, his word is his bullet, but he needs to put it in a gun. So when the word enters you, you become God's trigger. They say, oh, Nigeria will fail. And one of his bazookas can be in Kafancha. And on the mountain, he will hear, and Nigeria shall prosper again. He will fire it on behalf of the whole Nigeria. God has spoken. You don't know. We are not ordinary. We are strange beings. But see, there's a way to cook yourself. See, cook yourself. Because the day of trouble is coming. He said the devil is roaring, prowling, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he might devour. The day he comes to you, make sure there are words. Because if you faint in the day of trouble, it's not because your God is weak. It's because your strength is little. But your strength it's the word that is in you. I write unto you, young man, because you are strong and the word of the Lord abided in you and you have overcome the evil one. First John 2, verse 12 to 14. You are strong. The word of the Lord abides in you. You have overcome. Who told you your company will not work? He's joking. Who told you your ministry will fail? He's joking. Who told you you will die? He's joking. They told me somebody said I will die. Before I responded, I heard from my spirit. That frustrated the devices of the crafty. Ah, the thing will just come out. Who is it that said the thing and it cometh to pass when the Lord commanded it not? It doesn't need prayer. Response has come. It's called the Rema War. Most of you don't have words. That's why you pray all prayers. There are some things before you kneel down, the answer will jump out of you. That's how to build faith. Choke yourself with the womb. The second way to build faith, sit down. Write these things down. I'm tempted to fly. Oh, I'm feeling motions. I'm feeling motions. You know, there are some utterances that you suspend because they are ladders. When you touch them, you are sent. But I want you to write these things so that you practice it. Hmm. Then I ask the Lord, what they with you? And he said, yeah. And he said, yeah. Hey, then I asked the Lord. Then I asked the Lord. What they with you? What they with you? He said, yeah. And he said, yeah. You're the hollow one. You're the hollow one. You're the holy one. saw me and said 
Is this you? Ah, you even look bigger on the screen. You are so young. Why do you talk like that? I say I'm an amplifier. I'm not the one talking. It's an ancient spirit talking on my inside. <laughs> law in the spirit. I decree over you. Everything dead in your life comes back to life now. Sit down for a moment. Mahalataya. Pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute. Ventilate your spirit. Something is there. Something. Something has entered you. Kaketuna. Baragata diata boranta vada. Baharo stava. Ziza. Ziza. Paroash tahate. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. My God. Oh. My God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ha! Mambra hafatalish. Thank you, Lord. Hear me? Get words. Get words. The Bible says, carry with you words. Carry, carry. Let your luggages not only be shoes and clothing, carry walls. The heaviest thing in your luggage should be walls. Be pregnant with walls. Be incubated with walls. It says, search ye out of the book of the law and read. None of these things shall fail. The mouth of the Lord, it has spoken it and his spirit has gathered it. Search, search out of the book of the law. Read. None of these things shall fail. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it. His spirit gathered it. We are not failures. to laugh at you is when you don't have words. They saw you say, hey, she's been married for five years. How come? Your word is still going through gestation period. Did you see when God met Abraham in Genesis 18, he said your wife Sarah in the next time of life shall be with child. In that nine months people were laughing. The word was germinating. Put it there and relax and see how God will floor your enemies. 
He said Joseph was in the prison until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. You can imagine those who made mockery of him. He said the king sent for to lose him. Even the ruler of the people. He made him lord of his house and ruler of his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and to teach his senators wisdom. The guy who you call the prisoner is actually a teacher of senators. The difference was that the word was still passing through a face. I decree over you, everything spoken about your destiny manifest from tonight. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. 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 The Lord is telling me somebody who has been struggling with his knee, your knees, as if he couldn't carry you anymore, you can't walk. Life has entered. As you stand up, you'll discover strength has come. The pain has gone. And in the same way, anything crippled in your life, receive power now to fly. Sit down, sit down, sit down for a moment. I want you to write it. So that you will practice. Oh, I want to sow. Sefria Daruka. Sezeze Duruana Vandaka. You know the, the mystery of waiting upon the Lord is that when the time comes, you fly. You fly. Via Cometes. There's a level where you crawl. That's good. Thank God for it. But there's a level where you walk. Thank God for it. There's a level where you run. Thank God for it. But there are realms where men fly. They that wait upon the Lord. They mount up with wings like the eagles. Marakatoa fatakira paragata. They mount up. They mount up. That situation that looks like your end is a turn to a new beginning. That situation that looks like your end, I prophesy over you, is a turn to a new beginning. A more glorious life. A more glorious destiny. In the name of Jesus. And do double and oh. What do you double and oh? Oh, he mean here. I got to keep it here. And do double and oh. What do you do double and oh? Oh, he mean here. I got to keep it here. See. God is beginning to change people's destinies. I see in the spirit, destinies are being rewritten. You may not have traveled out of your local government before, but hear the word of the Lord. The doors of nations open to you now. My God, you may not have touched money before. Hear me now. The power to get wealth, he enters your hand now. Barako, Sefatani, Baragira, Paragata. Nobody in your lineage may have made any impact before, but you shall be a joy of many generations, out of your bellies flow rivers of living waters. I decree and declare, arise, shine, your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. This is your day, shine forth. defeated now God raises you as a warrior God raises you as a warrior the names of men and women have been added to the heroes of faith it's a time we fail me to speak of Gideon to speak of Barak of Jephthah of Samson of David and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdom obtained righteousness shut the mouth of lions quenched the violence of fire weak men were made valiant in battle and they put to flight the armies of the alien and guess what your name is being added. Martha joins that list. Matthew joins that list. Victor joins that list. Michael joins that list. Godwin joins that list. Favor joins that list. Maratha, Berekatona. There are no
anointing that makes warriors. The anointing that makes warriors. It descends now. Everyone hearing me that belong to the warrior generation. I release that grace upon you. I release that grace upon you. makes warriors. There is a garment that makes giants in the kingdom. I decree over you now the grace, the anointing, the mantles, the oil that turns charlatans to veterans. Oh, shall me? There are seven of them that God will shift drastically in the name of Jesus, wherever you are standing. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, carry that man to now. succeed in ministry. Hear the word of the Lord. Your name will be heard in nations. You will provoke revival in nations. Some of you can't even pay for the shop where you are doing business now. Hear me. You will buy properties in nations of the world. From Asia to the Middle East to Europe to America. The power that makes that happen. Let it rest upon you now. down for a moment. Ah! Shall flow rivers rivers of living waters yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah! Out of my belly shall flow rivers rivers of living waters yeah, yeah. For some of you, they have not just written you off. They've written your family off. But hear this. Not too long from now, it will be said concerning you, shall any good thing come out of Nazareth? Because your result will model you at the level of the Christ. Shall flow rivers rivers of living water Sit down, let me round up my teaching. 
the power of what I'm sharing with you now is not just the atmosphere. It's that as you practice it, you will see mind-blowing results. The first way to grow your faith is by sitting on the word. The second way to build your faith is by prayer. In Jude verse 20, it said, Dearly beloved, building up yourselves upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. When you pray, you develop your faith. You know why? When you pray, you see. You see from the realm of God. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Ask of me, I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. The reason most of us are numb is the only things we are seeing are discouragement. The only things we see are failures. The only thing we see is fear. You need to see from the realms yonder. That's what prayer does for you. It opens you up to dimensions of the spirit. The same way God told Abraham, Genesis 15, 5 to 6, Genesis 13, 14, see and get result. When you see, you will believe. I'm not saying natural things now. I'm saying from God's perspective. They say Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. How? Because God showed him. Every faith giant you see, God is showing them something. That thing God shows you is what shifts you to the faith dimension. Because the faith dimension is a fourth dimension. It's dimensions beyond matter, space and time. It's a supernatural dimension. And it's prayer that opens you to these realms of sin. There is no faith giant that is not a prayer giant. Not one. Those who walk in faith, you know, you can rot wonder today. Tomorrow you are afraid as if you are not the one. Because you need to keep seeing. It's as far as your eyes can see that you possess. And the job of prayer is to open you up to realms where you can see. The second way to build faith is by prayer. The third way to build faith is by fasting. Matthew 17, 19 and 20. Jesus went to pray and they brought a child, deaf and dumb. The disciples couldn't cast out the spirit. They were put to shame. And Jesus came, cast out the spirit. So they went to him. Why couldn't we? He says, it's because of your unbelief. And in verse 20, he said, how be it? This kind goeth not, but by prayer and fasting. It's not the demon. We don't cast out devils by fasting. It will, it will contradict theology. We cast out devils by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. When he said, this kind goeth not, but by prayer. He was referring to your unbelief. There are certain levels of unbelief that will not leave you until you pray and fast. Because when you fast, you see. When you pray, you see from God's perspective. Isaiah 58 verse 5, 6 to 7. The Bible clearly states it. When you fast and fast correctly, is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day, a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a, a burish or to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this fast an, an acceptable day to the Lord? Verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness and to undo heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free. And they, and that ye break every yoke. So he's telling them how to fast accurately. That it's not just to afflict yourself. It's not just to be hungry, but to also be kind and generously disposed toward others. Now when you fast correctly, see verse 7. Go to verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be your reward. So when you fast correctly, your light breaks forth. And your light is light, is sight and understanding in the spirit. And the moment that light breaks forth, faith is born. So the third way to build your faith is by fasting. When you fast, you see. And when you see from God's perspective, faith becomes a natural byproduct. The fourth way to build your faith is to take faith-based actions. 
I've quoted here time without number. James 2, 19, 20, and 26. He said, Thou believest that there's only one God. He said, Thou doest well. The devil also believes and trembles. O vain man. He said, Don't you know that faith without works is dead? In verse 26, he said, As the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. See, if faith comes alive in you, it provokes action. That's why Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4 13, according as it is written, they believe and have spoken. We have been the same spirit of faith. We believe and speak. When you have the same spirit of faith, you must act. James 1 22 to 24. He said, Don't be that man who sees himself in the mirror and as he turns, he forgets. He said, but be the man that continues to do what he has seen from the perfect law of liberty. He said, you shall be blessed. Faith necessitates action. It's as you start acting that your faith grows. Some of us see us, we thought things happen. It took a lot of actions. Many failures in the past. Now we are looking, seeing little, little results. Very little. And we have not started. Go and check the giants of faith. Every day they acted. You see people praying for the sick, they are healed. Some of them pray for the sick every day for two years before they started noticing certain results. Because every time somebody is not healed, you learn something you shouldn't have done. These kinds of action is to practice the God life. Practice it. I live literally trapped in this web of practice. Can I tell you what I've done in the last one week? I started my week last week Sunday. I stayed in God's presence for seven hours in prayers. I came here and ministered to you. The next day, that was Monday, I did three recordings for pastoral teaching. And then I counseled with some people. And the more I hear people's problems, the more I become wise. I hear a thousand and one problems every week. Counseled with people, did three recordings. That's three teachings. On Tuesday, I came back I counseled with people, prayed with people, and then came here and taught. When I left the meeting I had with the, the, pro, the building project. That's Tuesday. On Wednesday, I left for Lagos in the morning. Preached that evening. Thursday morning, I preached. I returned to Abuja and went straight to the studio and did two other teachings for leadership training. On Friday, I was on my way to Onisha. I landed on Onisha. Rested for a few hours. That night I preached. As I was going out to preach, I was supposed to leave on Nisha that night to go to Asaba the next morning. My host showed up like a like a, a funny person and told me that sorry, that meeting is a, is a vigil. And you are just telling me now. I wanted to say, please leave me. But the Holy Ghost restrained me. I'm going to preach now. It's eight o'clock. You are telling me I have a vigil. Am I a robot? But God restrained me. I went and preached in Onisha. Finished by 10:30. Returned to the hotel. 11.50, we were on our way, crossing the Onisha Bridge to Asaba. I landed the crusade ground by 12.30. Mounted the podium 1 a.m. Preached until 2.30 in the morning. Into Saturday morning. Miracles everywhere. As I finished, Saturday morning, 8.50, we were on board the flight back to Abuja. I rested yesterday throughout. Today, I went back to the altar praying. I'm here talking to you. In one week, I preached 11 to 12 times. That's why I don't need to think to preach. I practice the God life. The words lend themselves to me. As I read, pray, and teach, it grows. You need to hear my first message. In 10 minutes, message was over. Now I can preach 12 sermons in one week, and I'm fresh. If you heard me now, you'll think this is my first message in 8 days. No, this is the 12th one. One on Sunday, three on Monday, that's four. One on Tuesday, uh, one on Wednesday, one on Thursday, another two Thursday evening, one on, on Friday in Onisha, one in Asaba. That's 10, 11 or so. And I'm here talking to you. I have another meeting tomorrow. I'll still be here for Bible study on Tuesday. On Wednesday, Thursday, I'll be doing more recordings. Friday, I'm on my way to Benue. That's why we are sharp. We are practicing. You preach once in a month and you want fire to come down when you are talking. Are you not joking? You pray for the sick once in a month and you want to see cancer healed? It doesn't work like that. Faith without works is dead. And this kind of work is not a work to justify your action. It's to practice the God life. Anything you know you have grace for, do it and do it consistently. 
See how sharp you will become. The fourth way to build your faith is by engaging it. It's like Jimmy. Somebody may have more flesh, another will have more muscle. It depends on what you do with the muscle. And finally, the fifth thing that builds your faith is trials. 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 James 1, 2 to 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Verse 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Faith must be tried for it to grow. He said, but let patience have a perfect way that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. The faith that produces results is tried. When I see some of these giants, I wonder, did they appear like this? I had to go back to their history. Go and look at the story of the faith giants. You will see. There was a time when Bishop Oedepo's wife was afflicted for one year. He said they went somewhere to preach. And I'm talking about it because she wrote a book on it. So it's public knowledge. Went to preach. And when he was done preaching, the wife came up to take offering. And she was tattooed on the altar. When he saw that the wife was not talking after three minutes, he knew something was wrong. He rushed there. They shot an arrow at her. And she was struck from the altar. And for ten months, every day she said she saw the spirit of death standing on the door. The man didn't stop his messages. He didn't stop traveling. He didn't stop anything because the devil can't determine our calendar. And they, they, both him and the wife kept on in faith. Every day she was taking communion. In the tenth month, the lost one showed up and made a declaration. That night, they saw a dead bed in the Apollo. A room that is sealed. Where did the bed come from? The spirit of death that came in the likeness of a bed had died. And that's not all. Many trials. My brother and friend Isaac Oedeko said, when he was a child, he went and held naked wire and the thing electrocuted him to death. Come back! You can't die. People don't die here. This same young man, when he matured, he had three infirmities. Diabetes, three major organ infirmities. And they kept trusting God in faith for years. And I'm saying this because he also shared it publicly. They didn't just appear. They fought many lions. I heard about Pastor Chris. One day he said he came home. They called him brother from the office. Come, come, come. What happened? His daughter couldn't walk. And he came usually as a hidden evangelist. In the name of Jesus. Huh. Nothing happened. What is this? He tried everything. Nothing happened. And he kept trusting God. He kept trusting God. He kept praying. Imagine a Pastor Chris. Somebody didn't have broken legs. Somebody is not paralyzed. Pastor Chris that will say, get up. They don't start with get up. They are trials. And he prayed and prayed. Nothing happened. So he kept praying until he received a note of victory. And one day he was outside somewhere. And the second daughter called. Daddy, where are you? He said he was in so and so place. They drove there. What's happening? It, they said, wait, we are coming. What's going on? And they drove to the place. Lo and behold, his daughter who couldn't walk, opened the door and was running towards him. He said when he saw his daughter coming, tears dropped on his eyes. And hugged him. They've seen things. Paul said, if after the manner of men, I fought the beast of Ephesus. If your faith does not have trials, where would the beauty of faith be? That thing you are going through is not meant to destroy you. That's what gives credibility to your faith. That's what toughens your faith. This is what some of these men knew that say, our God can deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we will not bow. We will rather die. Because too much trials have toughened them. Paul said we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit. Philippians 3 verse 3. Rejoicing in Christ Jesus. Having no confidence in the flesh. Trials have made them not to trust their human abilities. Nobody carries authentic faith who is not tried. In fact, when you master trial, then thanksgiving will become your song. That's why the Bible said, Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith. Doing what? Giving thanks. When you see somebody who can thank God in trouble, know that person's faith has signature of trials. His cars have become his badges. Be anxious for nothing. He said, in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that surpasses knowledge will garrison your heart. What is faith? 
Faith is to trust in God and to back up your trust with action. That's the first level of faith. So I don't matter what is going on around me. I believe God. Let God be true. And let all men, let all circumstances be liars. That is faith. It's not enough to trust God. Back that trust with action. That's faith. And trust me, nobody who trusted God has ever been put to shame. The Bible said they looked up to him and their faces were radiant and they were not ashamed. The people who are put to shame are those who didn't trust God. Nobody. I've heard stories. Have we not experienced it? God told me, start up. And God gave me a date in January. Up until one week, we had no cover. Because you don't start ministry with money. You start ministry with wisdom and faith. You know, many people think, when I have 10 million, I will start. Before you start, the money will finish. Nobody. Isaac Oedekbo was talking the other day. He said, when I started, my dad gave me no cover. He said, you have learned the way of faith. Go and put it to work. That's the currency of, of ministry. If I give you money, I've destroyed you. I didn't start with money. See, when you send pastors, go here. They start crying. Ah, I need money. That's why they don't succeed. Ask the person who is sending you, how much was he given? We were given the mandate. Jesus said, when I sent you without pause, without script, without sander, lackest thou anything? They said they lack nothing. All they carried was faith. One week to inauguration, no cobble anywhere. But God said, we must start. On the day of inauguration, I kept telling everybody, I'll do your transfer, I'll do your transfer. From nowhere, from faith. And a woman invited me to preach. I went to preach. I finished. She was so touched. She said, let the whole church give money to this man. He's starting his church today. I didn't even announce it. Lo and behold, 14 million came out from faith. And from that day, we have never knocked on anybody's door. Please help. Not one. And until Jesus comes by his message, we will never ask anybody. We will do what the Bible says and that's enough. When you see ministries move like this, you will think, oh, somebody is giving them money. Be joking. Everybody who gives here is God that touched their heart. So, because we don't coerce people, we just believe God. We preach the word the way it is and God does his work. But if you walk in faith, you can never be put to shame. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. You want to bow your heads now and ask God for that grace to walk extraordinary dimensions of faith. Pray now. The Lord has visited us mightily. As I round up, please hear me. On ground, online, before this week is over, your mouth will be filled with laughter. Long-standing afflictions are dissolved now. From sicknesses to lack to confusion and contradictions with men. I decree under this atmosphere of faith, every chain in your life is broken. Every sickness in your body is destroyed. Every lack in your life is broken. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Ah, I'm seeing giants. I'm seeing giants. He said, though thy beginning be small, he said, thy latter end shall greatly improve. See, some of you here who just have one shirt, watch what I'm telling you. By this time next year, you will be able to buy lands and properties. You will give to God in millions. I'm seeing giants. Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai Somebody listening to me now, you just lost a property. The Lord is telling me to tell you, you will receive double for your losses. Somebody listening to me now, 
the only person the whole family is trusting died. Just died like that. And it looks as if you are hopeless. The Lord is telling me to tell you, I am your shield. I am your exceeding great reward. Fear not. Your tomorrow will be greater than your today. Thank you, Father. The Lord keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. Lift up his countenance over you. And give you peace. Write this scripture down. This is a prophetic word for everybody hearing me now. Isaiah 60 verse 15. You were a desolate land. No man went through you. But I have made you an eternal excellency. The joy of many generations. You can go and write it and put it in your office. I am an eternal excellency. The joy of many generations. I decree that is your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Give the Lord a shout of praise. A moment have you been blessed are you charged to take over see don't be afraid of anything conquer money when they say 10 million you are shaking relax your source is God conquer money tell yourself no amount is bigger than me conquer nations when they say Canada America England you are acting as if some of us don't qualify relax tell yourself I will dominate in every nation. Any nation I step my feet is mine. Conquer those things. Your insufficiencies don't exist. He said, cast your cares upon him. He cared for you. Conquer everything. You are supposed to reign in life. So reign. I said reign. You didn't hear me. I said reign. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, most of you who don't look like it, very soon you'll start shining. And those of you who look like it, you will keep exceeding the expectation of men. In the name of Jesus.